Hey guys, we're in the shop with Brian Wolf, and we're dissecting the 7.3 Godzilla. So we wanted to take a look inside the variable displacement oil pump. So we got one, we're gonna take it apart, we're gonna show you what's inside. Okay, we've already taken the fasteners out, we pulled the cover off to take a look at what's inside. Uh, there is a spring that really works, holds it in the default position if you do happen to have the variable displacement control disconnected. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off and show you guys what's inside and kind of how it works. So pull this back off. First, I want to let you know that I did pull this spring out. The spring is in here and it will push this all the way up uh, if, the, um, if there's no control on it. So I'm gonna take this aside so I can move this back and forth easy to show you what's happening. So you can see that this is all integrated. This is the pickup, so the oil pump will suck oil out of the sump through this plastic um, pickup and into this cavity here. Now there is a control channel back here that will allow this to put pressure on the other side of this, uh, in this channel to push against the spring and actually change the displacement of the pump. So if the spring is in there, this is all the way up and you can see we have a large cavity so that it'll be pumping a lot of oil when oil demand is high. Now if we're in a control environment, we're actually putting oil on the other side of this channel. It'll work against the spring pressure and push this down. And you can see this is where the variable displacement nature comes. These veins are actually pumping less oil and therefore reducing the friction within the engine, which gives it better fuel economy. This was one of the key features that we did put in the engine so we didn't need either variable displacement uh, in an engine control, actually de deactivating cylinders, or direct injection. This is really a big fuel economy benefit when you're running at low speeds. So it's, it's a pretty simple device. All right, so while you got this thing apart, you can see this is a one-piece assembly with a shaft that's driven from the front wicket tray, but this, I'm, I feel like this almost works as a windage tray or like in the old days, a girdle support or some, of some sort, because does it add structure or strength to the bottom end of the engine? I don't believe it does. I mean, the structure really comes from the six bolted mains. You got four, but down and two across with the deep skirt block. That thing's really, really solid. Um, this is, I believe you mentioned, is more of the windage tray slash oil pump assembly um, is, is what the main features are. So this is where the oil comes in from the oil pan. As Evan mentioned, this is the shaft going to the front that is driven off the crankshaft. So it, it's a pretty simple device. This was an older variant, so you can see it's a little bit different uh, than the one that we just pulled off the other engine. And of course, the chain does have a slight, has, has a tensioner on the slack side, a mechanical tensioner. Okay, I want to just talk briefly about the camshaft and the valve train configuration. So this is a production camshaft. Um, as you can see, it's uh, got some pretty lumpy lobes on it for a factory cam. Um, and that's because on the intake side, we're talking 540 lift. On the exhaust side, it has just over 600 lift on the cam, so that's pretty big. The other thing I'm really happy with this camshaft is the bearings. They're a 60 millimeter camshaft right from the factory. So with all that beef in there, it really makes for very stiff and it's going to be able to hold the valve events. If we move to the lifter uh, going up the valve train, you can see it's pretty much a standard hydraulic lifter. Um, it's a nice roller uh, design and with nitrated axles and rollers in it. Um, moving further up the valve train, we go to the push rod. The push rod is a 3 8 diameter push rod. It's reasonably short, uh, again, for stiffness, and that's why it has a fairly nice high cam center line from the factory. Uh, moving further up the valve train, we'll go to the rocker arm. The rocker arm is a 1.8 ratio on both the intake and the exhaust. We've already talked about it a little bit. Uh, it does have nitrated rollers and axles in it. So again, this valve train is really designed you know, for reliability. Um, the oiling is, a, uh, is key to make sure we have oil all the time. Because again, going in super duty trucks, not so important to the racers, but you know these things can idle for hours and hours at a time. And you've got to keep the valve train happy. Moving further uh, into the valve train, we'll go to the valves we've got the intake and the exhaust valves. So you can see the intake uh, is a nice size, it's 2.17 inches, 
Uh, the exhaust is 1.67 inches from the factory. So you got a nice sizable valve uh, for performance applications as well as meeting the needs of the Super Duty. Um, and then of course we have the springs. The springs are pretty sizable springs. Uh, they are different on the intake and the exhaust. Uh, labeled so it's easy for the manufacturer for the assembly line to make sure they have them installed right. Um, and the reason these valves, you know, I'm asked uh, the springs why they're so tall is when you do have these significant valve events from the factory, you have to really be careful the stresses in that spring. Again, it has to last thousands of hours and hundreds of thousands of miles. So that demanded this valve spring package that uh, was put into it.